Hi guys, namaste. This is Jataksha. So I wanted to make a video on wines. However, I didn't want to simply keep explaining about it. So I decided to take things up a notch, and in order to understand firsthand in depth about this incredibly interesting topic, I actually decided to visit a winery in Nashik that has its own vineyard. So we'll keep switching back and forth. Let's go. So the winery we will be visiting today is Soma Wine Village. Founded in 2011 by Pratik Pach Patel, his genius really proved a virtue when the company broke even in its first year of operations. Soma is spread over 25 acres with three villas, a resort, multi cuisine restaurants, a winery, and of course beautiful vineyards. With a tour of the winery and a tasting session of nine wines laying ahead of us, Soma sounds exciting to say the least. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a little information about the history of wines in India and the regions the grapes are grown in because it's not really the first place that comes to mind when talking about wines. So what we need to know about the basics of wine geography is that wine grapes are typically grown in latitudes of 30 and 50 degrees in the northern hemisphere and 50 to 30 in the southern hemisphere. These two bands of regions which means a very small part of northern India comes into this region but the majority of the country does not. India as we know is a typically hot country with a tropical climate where temperatures can easily rise up to 45 degrees Celsius which is not the ideal condition for such a crop. Viticulture and winemaking in India has actually been taking place since thousands of years and can be traced back to the Persian traders who brought it along with themselves to our country. The earliest historical accounts date back to the Vedic period with 13th century BCE scripts revealing that the Aryan tribes found great pleasure in indulging in wine. The Portuguese encouraged grape growing for wine production in the regions of Goa and Baramati and the British in Kashmir and Surat. After independence in the early 20th century, wine found itself taking a backstage. Phylloxera, along with government disapproval, nearly wiped out the industry. No! God, please, no! Wine production returned to India in the 1980s along with a growing middle class. The majority of wine consumed is domestic as the taxes on imported wines are as high as 160%. So let's begin with the classifications of wine. Wines are classified into four broad categories, still or natural wines, sparkling, fortified and aromatized. Still wines are differentiated by their colors. Sparkling wines as we know are fizzy wines. Carbon dioxide is introduced into sparkling wines during secondary fermentation in order to make them fizzy. Fortified wines are also called heavy wines. They are fortified by the addition of brandy before or after fermentation. Aromatized wines are aromatized with the additions of herbs, bark, spices, fruits and shells. Vermouth is the most famous example of an aromatized wine. Now, let's jump back to Soma. Okay guys, so just a quick update. We've just reached Soma Wine Village. Uh, we left from Thane at around 8.30 in the morning. And we got a lot of traffic because obviously we were late. So we've reached here at around 1.30. So it's taken us a good 5 hours. But the drive was amazing. And uh, there we have... Hello. Hello. <laughs> but the area, the place and the views are beautiful. So we'll show you a little.
Wine tour at 2:30. Right. So we also booked a wine and tasting tour at 2:30, uh, and uh, there were a couple of options. There were three options. So there was the first, the cheapest one was for 350, and that would give you a tasting of five wines. The next was 500, which was which was seven. <laughs> the next was 500, which was seven wines, and 700 for nine. 700 for nine wines. Right. And that's what we've chosen. Now before we head out for the tour of the winery and understand the process of wine making we need to first understand our produce grapes are grapes right well not exactly not all grapes are equal in terms of wine making in fact they're broadly divided into two categories table grapes and wine grapes table grapes are the ones that you're more familiar with they're available at your local market and are much larger in size in comparison to wine grape the smaller size benefits the wine grapes because the resulting wine is much more concentrated in flavor and adds more substance to the wine Another reason why wine grapes are not as appetizing as table grapes is the size of the seed. We're also used to small seeded or seedless grapes nowadays, but wine grapes still have large seeds that take up a substantial portion of the fruit. Now this one may seem a little counterintuitive, but wine grapes have higher levels of sugar than table grapes. This is because the juice is more concentrated and the berries are smaller. Also sugar plays a vital role in the conversion of grape juice into wine. Now let's jump back on the tour and understand the process of wine making. Our tour presenter Vivek told us some very interesting facts. So Ma currently produces 2 lakh liters of wine per year all of them being younger wines all the vineyard plantations have been done on a slope so the water drains down and does not accumulate during the monsoons in terms of actual yield the average yield per plant is about 5 to 6 kilograms of grapes per year The decision when to pick is probably the most important in the process. Harvesting season in India starts from January and lasts till March. If the producer wants the wine to be dry, which means less sweet, the berries are then harvested earlier. And if the wine has to be semi-sweet or dessert, they allow the berries to ripen further so they can develop their natural sweetness. The fundamental difference between red wine making and white wine making is that with white wines, the juice is separated from the seeds and the skins before fermentation. and to do that a bladder or a pneumatic press is often used there are three major ways to produce rosé wine skin contact simier which is the juice drawn off a tank of grape must after a short maceration and blending which means blending white wines with some red wines now red wines are made by fermenting with the skins and the seeds present all the color in the wine comes from the skins and the tannins and the compounds come from the seeds and the skins as well so here they ferment first and then press later as opposed to white wines where they press first remove the skins and the seeds and then ferment once the grapes are processed the must or the juice is then transferred into fermentation vessels or tanks in primary fermentation the sugar is converted into carbon dioxide and alcohol with the help of the wine yeast saccharomyces as the yeast starts mixing the juices are released and carbon dioxide starts rising up which lifts the skins to the top of the tanks this is called the cap During fermentation the cap is mixed in 1 to 3 times a day this process also helps in regulating the temperature Once fermentation is complete the new wine is either pressed or drained off into new vessels they then have the option of racking their wines racking is the process where you transfer your wine in order to leave the sediments behind filtering or finning may also be done often wine makers will add egg whites clay or other compounds to the wine that will help precipitate dead yeast cells and other solids out of a wine After the wine meets all its necessary checks the wine is then filled into glass bottles and then capped To be honest with you after taking in so much information you really deserve a glass of wine and the tasting session did just that
After seeing, swirling, sniffing and sipping on nine of Soma's finest offerings, we were back outside for a breath of fresh air. Okay, so that's it for today guys. We're leaving from Soma. It was a beautiful experience. And that's it for this episode guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to share the obsession.